Okay, who's ready for another 20 to 30 minute video about a topic that we really don't know that much about? This guy is right here. And this brick is too, right? Oh yeah, Barry, look at him. He can barely contain the excitement. Yeah, I know. Barry's not the most expressive brick in the bunch, but if you just watch him for long enough, you can disseminate between happiness, anger, excitement, jealousy, right? So yeah, he's he's really excited. He's pumped for this one. All right. So, Kozuki Odin backstory. We're finally getting it in the manga. Next week is going to kick it off. We didn't get a break or anything, so that's that's good. Um, Oda has been really good at giving us a lot of information about Odin while simultaneously not giving us a lot of information on Odin. You know, we've seen him quite a bit in flashbacks, but he's always in silhouette, so we don't know what he looks like. Um, we know that he wields the swords Enma and Ame no Habakiri. We know that he was a swordsman, the only swordsman apparently that was able to scar Kaido. Uh, we knew he was the son of Sukiyaki Kozuki, who was the former shogun of Wano. We know He's the father of Momo and Hiori and the husband of Toki. We know all that stuff, but at the end of the day, and, and all of the scabbards revere him, and like they're, you know, they, they um, look up to Odin for making them proper samurai, and he was their leader and everything. And so we always hear people talking about how awesome Odin was, but as for the man himself, we don't really know that much about it, other than that really he was just, um, he thought Wano was a really cramped country and he wanted to open the borders. You know, that was like the most defining character's trait that Odin has existed exhibited so far that Oda's revealed to us. I apologize in advance because Kozuki Odin and the mangaka of One Piece Oda, I'm probably going to be making mistakes with that the entire video. Um, but of course, Oda has to keep things secret from when the flashback was finally going to start. I'm sure Oda probably has a notebook or something in his studio that's like, okay, this is the stuff that's safe for me to reveal about Odin, and this is the stuff that I really, really want to save for the proper flashback. That's also the reason why every Every single time we see him, he's always in silhouette. We have no idea what his face looks like. We know he has, like, a weird hat. I'm guessing it's a hat. Probably a hat. But you never know with Oda. I said in the review, it could very well be his hair or the shape of his skull. You know, so he had a really weird haircut this entire time. And that's that's why the silhouette looks the way it does, right? Okay. So, this is going to be a video, kind of like a preemptive thing before we get into the actual flashback. This is everything that we know so far about Kozuki Odin along with a few assumptions that I'm making. The first assumption is we're going to tackle right out of the gate how old is Odin, or how old was Odin because he's dead right now. <laughs> Even that, I'm kind of like, well, you know, it's One Piece, right? So he might still be alive, but, you know, how old was he 20 years ago when he was apparently killed by Orochi and Kaido, all right? Um, so, from looking at the ages of the other scabbards, okay, they seem to be right now in their mid-50s. Um, the best that we have to go on here is Ashura Doji. Right now, Ashura Doji is 56. We know this because he mentioned that him and Kanemon were the same age before Kanemon made the time jump, okay? So Kanemon is now currently 36. Ashura Doji, because he lived through those 20 years in Wano, is 56, okay? Going along with that line of reasoning, Kondro would be 59 right now. We don't know Raizo's age. Um, let's see... Uh, oh, and yes, uh, Inarashi and Nekamamushi are both 40, uh, but they apparently came later because they weren't born in Wano. They washed ashore at Wano when they were little kids. Um, the flashback that just started in the last chapter, the 39 years ago, Inarashi and Nekamamushi would have only been one year old. Now, maybe minks develop faster than humans, but I'm going to assume that they washed ashore at Wano when they were like kids. Um, I highly doubt they were one year old children or babies when we see them in that flashback, so I'm going to and yeah, Inu and Neko, they came later, okay? But if we're going to go along the lines of like, okay, the scabbards, the ones that lived through the 20 years, they're in their 50s right now, and of course the ones that made the time jump would be around their 50s right now. Uh, Kiku Nojo, Okiku, uh, we didn't see her in that flashback with the, um, the other scabbards when they were really young. It looked like Izo instead of Kiku, so, you know, she probably came along later as well. But when it comes to like the core members of the, the scabbards, you know, we're talking about, uh, you know, Kinemon, Kondro, Raizo, those guys seem to be around their mid-50s right now. So, I think it stands to reason that Odin would probably be around that same age. Uh, maybe slightly older, but I think the idea is that Odin, in his younger years, you know, he was this, uh, the, this rapscallion, he was this, uh, kind of like, uh, you know, kind of ruffian, you know, he would go around Wano, and we saw that in the last chapter, 39 years ago, he was not revered the way that he was spoken about 
uh, well, by Kanemon and everything. Oh, yeah, Odin was a great man. He was this great guy that tried to unite all of Wano and tried to open up the borders, and then he was, you know, wiped off, taken from this earth before his time. You know, he wasn't talked about that way 39 years ago. You know, he walks into the flower capital 39 years ago. All of the people in the town are scrambling. They're like, hide your daughters, hide your wives, hide your livestock for undetermined reasons as of yet. You know, Kozuki Odin stomping into town, right? And Odin himself didn't really seem to care very much about the townspeople's, like, hatred of him. He was just kind of walking through town like, man, this place is as cramped as ever, man. I wish I could just, you know, I wish I could just open it up a little bit, right? So, yeah. So I'm going to assume, yeah, he was, he gathered up the scabbards, you know, that were like, maybe around the same age as him. Um, so like Doji and at this point in the flashback at 39 years ago, Ashura Doji and Kinemon, they would have both been 17 years old. So I could see Odin also being around, you know, maybe late teens, maybe, maybe early twenties, but maybe around, yeah, I'm going to say 17, 18, 19 during this flashback that we got in the last chapter. Okay. And so he went around the country and the scabbards in their original, like the, when they were originally founded by Odin, they didn't seem to have like a noble cause. They really seemed to just be Odin's personal gang because we had that flashback also at an undetermined time. At least it's uh, further back than 25 years ago when uh, Yasuie, you know, Shimosuke Yasuie, the daimyo of the Hakumai region back then, he kind of gathered up all the scabbards and they were all tied up and everything because they were trying to steal treasure from his vault and Yasuie kind of gave them that speech and stuff. So back then, yeah, the scabbards were not revered as like, oh, these are the these are the uh, mighty warriors that fight under the Kozuki banner. No, these were just like the ruffians that Odin kind of beat down and then like, oh, okay, master, we'll follow you from now on. Doji was included back then, and we got the backstory with Doji and Odin from Kinemon. He talked about how Odin went into the Curry region back in the day, this war-torn area that was just filled with, you know, um, Yakuza, basically, and Doji was like the master back then. Well, maybe not necessarily Yakuza, because we know that uh, Hyor Goro of the Flowers was the master of the Yakuza. Uh, these were more of just like, you know, Curry's like the part of like outside Wano. Like it's technically part of Wano, but it's the part that nobody goes to, okay? And that part was ruled by the mountain bandits under Ashura Doji, okay? So Odin apparently strolled into the Curry region, beat down Doji, and I could see Doji being the kind of respectable samurai that he was even back then, kind of just being like, okay, you defeated me. You're clearly stronger than me. I will follow you as one of your subordinates, okay? And so then over the years... Odin eventually matured and he ruled over Curry and became a respectful leader. And so that kind of made the switch there. That made the changeover where he was no longer viewed as this ruffian um, that would cause trouble. That he was actually a good guy. He was a pretty good leader of the Curry region. The scabbards were not just his gang. The scabbards were like his royal guard and stuff. And so eventually Sukiyaki was going to make Odin like the next shogun b before everything kind of went south with Orochi and Kaido and everybody. Okay, so yeah, that that's basically the idea that we're working with here It's just we got to hammer out the timelines and everything of how this went down But from what I can understand the flashback that we got in the last chapter That's when Odin was in his late teens and he was trying to get out of the country because he's, you know, maybe going through that rebellious phase of his teenage years where he was growing. He, he grew up in a noble household. His father was the shogun, right? So he grew up in the royal palace and the flower capital and everything like that. And I'm sure Sukiyaki wanted to breed him to, you know, grow up to become the next shogun. Um, however, keep in mind also, the Kozuki clan were kind of part of that isolated uh, mindset. Uh, we find that out in the last chapter, how, you know, Kinemon is remembering what Odin was saying. It's like, yeah, the Kozuki clan... They played a very big role in making Wano of what it is today. So pause for that for a moment. I'm going to get back to that. But let's just suffice it to say the life that Sukiyake wanted Odin to take up, you know, as the Shogun, the legacy that Sukiyake wanted was probably not the lifestyle that Odin wanted. He, Odin wanted open borders and wanted the world to be open up to Wano and everything like that and vice versa. Sukiyaki probably didn't want that. Sukiyaki was like, no, it's tradition to keep this country closed off and isolated and I'm going to raise you so you have that mindset. And Odin was like, screw that, old man. I don't want that. So he that's the, how he got the reputation of like his infamy of just, he's like, oh, that's, that's Odin. He doesn't listen to orders from his dad. You know, he just wanders around the country. I mean, he's technically technically nobility, so there's not much we can really do about it, but just kind of stay away from him, right? So he just stomps through the flower capital, and everybody just kind of closes up shop and everything right that. Um, 
Okay, so at this point, he probably get into, got into a lot of fights with the Scabbards at a young age. You know, like maybe him and Kinemon got into a fight. Kinemon lost. He's like, okay, I'll be your subordinate. Same deal with Kondro and Raizo. He's basically just finding all the strong up-and-comers of the country. And then he's like, hey, you know, you, you can uh, you can work for me from now on. And they did, okay? And then that, that's how the Scabbards were joined. Doji was the same thing. Um, but... At some point, Odin managed to succeed and go out to sea. Uh, in the last chapter, it mentioned that he failed to go out to sea, but eventually he did succeed in that. So we don't know exactly when that happened, when he went out to sea. Uh, but when he did, he eventually ran into the Whitebeard crew, and Whitebeard took a liking to him. You know, Whitebeard was charmed by this samurai of Wano. And so he traveled with the Whitebeard crew and actually became a division commander. Probably the 16th commander, because we know Izo is the current commander. He's from Wano, so it would have made sense that maybe after Odin left the Whitebeard crew, Izo maybe took up that mantle, or Izo had a lot of respect for uh, Odin, maybe po possibly being, most likely being, maybe possibly most likely being one of the scabbards back in the day, and so after Odin left Whitebeard's crew, Izo asked uh, Whitebeard, you know, hey, can I, you know, be your son? Can I travel on your, your Moby Dick? So that's, yeah, he's like, oh yeah, sure, come on, I, I like those samurai from Wano, you guys are really strong fighters, you're really loyal too, and he's like, okay, so they did that. Um, after Whitebeard's crew he traveled with Roger. You know, Roger was captivate captivated, and Whitebeard was charmed by this great samurai, okay? Um, of course, uh, he traveled with Roger all the way to the end of the Grand Line to Laugh Tale, and so Odin was one of the few people that actually got to know what the One Piece was, and learned about the true history of the Void Century and all that crap. Um, shortly after that, the Roger Pirates disbanded, and that was when Odin decided to head back to Wano. Uh, the flashback that we got 25 years ago, uh, recently, like two chapters ago, Ago, we see that flashback with the Roger crew partying. I mean, I'm gonna throw it out there. I think it's very, very likely that that's the party that they had after their adventure at Laugh Tale. After they left Laugh Tale and they found out what the One Piece was and they knew what the Void Century was and everything, they left and they're like, yeah, we're, we're the kings of the ocean. Roger, you're gonna go down in history as the king of the pirates. You know, uh, that was when Odin had that speech which was just like, you know, I think it's, I think I want to, you know, return to my country, but it's time for me to open the borders to enact this plan that I've been dreaming of ever since I was a teenager, ever since I was a little kid, probably, you know, and the other Roger pirates were like, well, come on, Odin, we'll, we'll help you out, you know, we're your crew, you're a great fighter, you're super loyal, you're our friend, let us help you, and Odin had the mentality of just like, no, guys, thank you so much, but this isn't your, your outsiders, you know, this, this is, like, the Kozuki clan has to do this, I think the reason why he was so dead set on him doing it, along with, like, his scabbards and everybody at Wano keeping outsiders out of it, was because that, yeah, the Kozuki clan was responsible back in the day for closing off the borders. It's gonna be by the hand of a Kozuki, me, Kozuki Odin, that's going to open it up. I'm gonna right the things that were wrong, okay? It's gonna be me and my followers, you know, getting you guys involved. I, I wouldn't feel comfortable with doing that, right? Um, now, this was 25 years ago. So, Roger would have been 52, um, going along the line of, like, just saying that, uh, Odin is the same age or around the same age as Doji and Kinemon. 25 years ago, uh, Odin would have been 31 in that regard, or around the age of 31, which makes sense, because that's kind of like in his heyday, traveling with the Whitebeard crew and Roger crew in his late 20s, early 30s, and that would fit around with a lot of the other members, right? I don't think Odin, um, y you know, like, I, I don't think that right now in the story, if he were still alive, he would be the same age as Whitebeard or Roger or Rayleigh. Uh, like in their late 70s, um, I, I, I just don't feel like Odin would be quite that old. Um, and so if that's the case, uh, 20 years ago, that would have made Odin around 36 when he was, um, you know, uh, apparently executed by Orochi and he died. I say apparently because we just, it's One Piece, we just don't know, that's the thing, we just don't know 100%. In this flashback that we're getting, if Od if Oda is dead set on making Oda Odin dead, <laughs> okay, let's rewind. Let's try that again. If Oda is dead set on making Odin dead definitively, there we go. Then he's gonna reveal it in this flashback because all we got up until this point was just 
the flashback of Momo remembering his father, you know, because apparently because his name is Odin, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, it's like Orochi's like, yes, I'm going to dunk Odin inside of the boiling water, you know, get it, because it's Odin, right? So, um, yeah, we, we got like a like a post-traumatic flashback from Momo and Kinemon and Kanjiro's perspective and everything. Um, they were apparently around the same location, so they knew what happened, but maybe they didn't actually see it happen. We, we don't know how it went down, but we're probably going to find out by the end of this flashback back exactly what the circumstances for Oda's death I mean Odin's death were okay fair enough all right so let's let's talk about um the isolationist of of Wano for a moment here okay so I mentioned this uh, a few weeks ago when we were finding out about the Shimosuke clan a little bit more when we found out about uh Shimosuke uh Kozaburo who was the guy that left Wano 50-something years ago, over 50 years ago, who's apparently the father of uh, Koshiro, who was the teacher and the, you know, the, the founder of Shimosuke Village in the East that trained Zoro in Kuina. You know, Kuina is his daughter, okay? So Kozaburo, okay? The Shimosuke clan rules over the northern half of Wano, uh, the Hakumai region and the Ringo region. At least they did before Kaido took over. Okay, so the Shimosuke clan, definitely very important clan, also has connections to Ryuma, because Ryuma 400 years ago was called Shimosuke Ryuma. Whether that be because Shimosuke was Ryuma's family name, or whether that be because Ryuma's epithet was Shimosuke, and the clan adopted that name after Ryuma's death, that's, who's to say that? It could go one way or the other. But the Shimosuke clan definitely connected to Ryuma, because they share the same name either one way or the other. Okay, so we also know the Kozuki clan are the current rulers of Wano. So, given what we know about Japanese history and how a lot of uh, Wano is based on, like, the Edo period of, of Japanese, you know, history and, you know, before that and stuff, he, you know, Oda's taking a bunch of references from his homeland, of course. Um, you know, ancient Japan or feudal Japan was not ruled over by just, like, a single shogun, you know, like, or a single family. You know, it, it, pay, it passed hands multiple times. So I'm thinking that uh, there was something that happened a couple hundred years ago. And Oda might not go into great detail here, but something happened a few hundred years ago. Let's say the Shimosuke clan uh, ruled over Wano for a time. Let's say, you know, Ryuma was their sword god. He slayed the dragon. Ryuma was an awesome dude. And it was his clan that he founded or his clan that he was already part of, the Shimosukis, that were the shoguns or the emperors of Wano for a few hundred years, like 400 years ago they were, 300 years ago they were, 200 years ago they were. Something happened at some point. Kozuki, this might be some sort of like, uh, you know, Senju Uchiha crap, where they were like rivals. Like the Shimosuke and the Kozuki clans were like rivals back in the day, centuries ago, okay? Maybe a hundred years ago or something, they got together and they managed to unify. And so the Kozuki clan took over and the Shimosuke clan were their loyal retainers because it, it, we still see that with Yasuie. Yasuie Shimosuke worked under Sukiyake and had a lot of respect for the man, had a lot of respect for Odin. Um, you know, so that, that seems to be like the Shimosuke and the Kozukis at least 20 years ago before Kaido took over, they were on good terms with one another, okay? Uh, but let's say as part of that... Um, exchange there as part of that handover there uh there was also that isolated nature of wano um i think odin said something as far back as you know the people can remember wano has always been an isolated nation all right so as far back as people remember i have no idea what that indicates a hundred years 200 years void century like that far back i have no idea but um yeah something i think it definitely is going to include the shimosukis because we've mentioned them so many times uh, and the Kozuki clans were, were part of that. So I think that might have been part of it there. It's just like, yeah, the Kozuki, maybe they defeat the Shimosukis and they become the ruling class of Wano, the ruling family of Wano. But it's like, we, we're going to isolate our land so nobody can come in to invade it or anything. We're just going to have a strict isolationist policy like, you know, feudal Japan did back in the day for a very, very long time. Because of that, um, Odin feels like it's his duty to end it. Uh, Sukiyaki, his father, wanted to keep it isolated, but Odin didn't, and that's why Sukiyaki kind of kicked him out of the royal palace, and he's just like, you know, uh, we don't want you here because you're not going to follow our legacy and everything. But after Odin gains a lot of strong followers, and after he travels with Whitebeard and Roger and learns a lot about the world, 
He returns to Wano maybe at that point, 25 years ago is when he returns and he starts doing, you know, the things that he was known for. He unifies Curry as this really, a, a really prosperous region and has the Paradise Farm and everything. And then, you know, let's say 25 years ago, he gets back and does that. Five years later, 20 years ago, it's looking like Odin is actually going to be a really respectful shogun. And Sukiyaki is maybe ready to pass, maybe at this point Sukiyaki is really old and he's ready to pass on the mantle. And he's like, Odin, my son, you back in the day, you were always a rapscallion ruffian running around. But I think now because you've united Curry and you're the daimyo and you're so beloved and you have these strong warriors at your, at your side, I think you're ready to become the Shogun. And then, bam, that's when Orochi shows up, that's when Kaido shows up 20 years ago, right when it's like, it's like, it's like the ceremony, like, it might not be that, like, dramatic, but it might be like the ceremony where Odin's about to become the next shogun of the country, and then all of a sudden Kaido bursts in, and Orochi's there, and then everything goes belly up at that point, and it's like, ah, crap, everything was going good, and then freaking dragons attack all of a sudden, right? And also dinosaurs, but mostly dragons, right? And then, of course, that's when the whole thing happened with, you you know, it's like Lady Toki appears like, we got to send you to the future. Take this DeLorean. And then, you know, everything happened from there that we're aware of. Okay. And then Odin was apparently killed. And then, you know, it's like, oh, I pass on my swords to my children and all that stuff as well. Right. So, yeah, that 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 makes sense. That's making more sense there. Right. That he was a ruffian in his younger years, got the scabbards on his side you know, Inarashi, Nekamamushi, they washed ashore, they also joined up, Denjiro was there, Izo was there, Kawamatsu was there, um, not sure where Kiku fits in yet, we still have to figure out how, we don't know how old she is, we don't know how, where she's gonna fit in, right, so that's, that's gonna include later, um, but then, at some point, he managed to get away from the island, he managed to get away, sail out from sea, probably after Sukiyaki disowned him, he's like, you're no longer welcome in the flower capital, he goes and talks to Yasuie for a little bit, hangs out there for a little while, but then he decides to head out to sea, spends his 20s traveling with the Whitebeard crew and the Roger crew, respectfully, in his early 30s, decides to return to Wano and actually try to change it for the better. And he does. He's a beloved daimyo of Curry. And then right before he's about to become the next Shogun in his mid-30s, that's when, that's when everything goes bad. All right. So, yeah, I think that's pretty much, as far as we're aware, um, you know, how the timeline goes. Oda could still switch around things and just like, oh no, he did this before he left, or this is, like, this is, I would love to know, here are the things I would want to know, just in general, like, okay, Oda's age, um, you know, what his childhood was like, uh, when did the scabbards individually join up, you know, like, who was, I, I'm, I'm assuming Kinemon, maybe Ashura Doji were the first of the scabbards, so I want to hear, like, see the, I mean, this doesn't have to be, like, a single chapter for each of the, you know, scabbards joining, it could just be one chapter, and it's like, he's, like, beating down Kinemon, like, join my crew, he beats down Ashura Doji, join my group, you know, that kind of stuff, um, I want to see that, I want to know when he went out to sea. I want to know how old Odin was when he finally set out to sea and how long he spent with Whitebeard and Roger's crew and then, uh, y you know, when um, he was apparently killed by Kaido. Uh, that's that's all the stuff I want to know there. When, it, when and him, Kaido probably had the same epic battle. That was probably the same year that he died. Uh, it was probably like Kaido's attacking the country. Odin's like, I got this. You know, you know, Nito to you, two sword style. Enma, Ame no Habakiri, shing shing. And then slices up freaking Kaido in midair. And he's got the scar. And Kaido's like, or whatever. Um, and it looks like maybe he won for a moment. But then Orochi did some underhanded tactics and managed to, you know, get Odin right where he wanted him. And then, and you know, dipped him in a giant vat of boiling water, apparently. You know, so that, that that's, that's like, probably happened around the same time, right? Um, and then the time travel crap happened, okay. So, yeah. Um, I'm thinking, I think the flashback uh, that we had between Otohime and Fisher Tiger and Fishman Island, that was a flashback we needed to see back then that revealed a lot of stuff about what was going on with Fishman Island. Um, that was about, like, six, seven chapters, something like that. I would be happy with Odin's being that long, uh, maybe even longer. Like, because... It's been hyped up for so long. I mean, he's been mentioned for so long in the story, his legacy, his impact on everybody. Sengoku had that line 
a few chapters ago when we found out about Roger and Whitebeard and, you know, the other Yonko's bounties, Sengoku had this line of like, oh yeah, speaking of, you know, Whitebeard and Roger, they both had this really strong samurai from Wano on their crew, this Kozuki Odin guy. And, and Sengoku, you know, to be fair, he mentions, you know, I don't think he has anything to do with the Rocks crew right now or anything, but isn't it kind of weird that, you know, the strong samurai of Wano or Wano in general kind of connects back to everything. And of course, we know that the Poneglyphs were created in Wano by the Kozukis back in the day during the Void Century. So yeah, of course, they're going to connect back, but there's more to this story. And Odin himself is connected back to this in probably more ways than we're privy to right now. So... I'm really pumped for this. I'm really excited for this flashback. Um, it's certainly not a situation where it's like, oh no, we're right about to get to the epic battle on Onigashima. Now we're getting like a eight chapter flashback. Dang it, Oda. No, no. This is going to be some good quality shit here, guys. Like, this is going to be some good stuff, all right? And I honestly, I'm loving the build up to the battle. I know, because it's like, this battle has been set up for so long that it's like, we're expecting some cataclysmic level crap here. We're expecting Luffy, Advanced Armament, Zoro with Enma, Kaido's Dragon, all the calamities. We're expecting so much. This battle is going to be insane when we get to it. So I'm okay with, um, hey, yeah, I'm going to give you like maybe eight, nine chapters of build up before we really get into this. I'd be like, yep. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I'm 110% fine with that, all right? Because when we get to this battle... It's, it's every review I do is going to be inconceivably gibberish. You know, it's just going to be like, guys, okay, this chapter, Kaido, King shows up, and, and then like, Kaido, and then, and then Zoro slices. Uh. So that's the end of the chapter. What did you guys like about it this week? You know, so I, I, I'm excited for the, the hype, the build up, and, and Oda knows what he's doing, so I'm fine with that. All right, so let me know below. Uh, what you're expecting from the Odin flashback. Uh, what do you think about the stuff I threw out here regarding his age and, you know, when he did, when he did the stuff that he did, you know, maybe it's like different timelines and stuff. Let me know about all that and, uh, we'll find out, uh, what's going on here in a few weeks. Thanks for watching, everybody. Teching, signing out.